Hey everybody, today we're debating whether or not Islam fits in Western society and we are certain right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here for another epic debate. This is going to be a fun one, folks, as we explore this brand new topic, probably a juicy one. So strap uh, strap your seatbelts on, folks. It's going to be a wild one. Want to let you know, though, at Modern Day Debate, we are a nonpartisan channel focused on hosting debates on science, politics, and religion. We are very excited for this one today, and if it's your first time here, consider hitting that subscribe button as we have many more debates to come. In fact, even tonight, we have a tag team debate, two atheists versus two Christians, so that should be a lot of fun. And also want to let you know, if you haven't heard yet, we are stoked about the fact that we have recently decided Modern Day Debate is invading the podcast world. So we are excited. You'll see on the far right side of your screen, those are just some of the podcasts, pod, I should say podcast apps that we are already on. And so if you can't find us on your favorite podcast app, let us know. We'll work to get on there. So with that, want to let you know for our debate today, very excited, want to let you know neither of our guests has a camera, so that is Basically, the screen, the way it looks right now, is the way it's supposed to look. You will be able to tell who's actually talking, though, by looking at which bar is lighting up. So there will be a, a yellow bar. You're seeing it blink a little bit as a little bit of sound is coming from Dean's mic. And so that will signify which side is talking. And want to let you know, for our format, it's fairly flexible. We have about roughly 10 to 12 minutes for opening statements, followed by open conversation and then Q&A. Want to let you know, if you have a question, feel free to fire it into the old live chat and it'll make it easier for me to get every single question in that Q&A list if you tag me with at Modern Day Debate in that question. Super Chat is also an option, in which case you can ask a question or if you'd like, you can make a comment toward one of the speakers and Super Chat will also push your question or comment to the top of the list for the Q&A to be sure it gets asked. So with that, we are excited, folks. We're going to kick this one off, but do want to let you know, we are very excited to mention, we are going to start with the affirmative. So Orthodox Moore is going to get the ball rolling as he's going to answer yes to the question that Islam can fit within Western society. And then Dean will go arguing why it cannot. So with that, very excited to have you guys. And one last thing, I put both of the links for our guests in the description, folks. So if you're listening and you're like, hmm, I like that. I want more. You can hear more at those links. So thanks so much, gentlemen. Let me just first say, we really appreciate you coming to hang out with us. It's a true pleasure to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate being here. Absolutely. And with that, Orthodox Moore, the floor is all yours for your opening. Well, let me say thank you to the, the platform for having us. Thank you for my counterpart for being here. And thank you for the chat for showing up. Let me share my screen real quick. Let's see. Can you see my screen? Yes, now we can. All right. Start up. So this debate is, does Islam fit in Western society? Real quick, my name is Tav Ansueno, AKA the Orthodox Moor. I'm a Quranist, Karite, Libertarian, Theological Naturalist. I wasn't always a Muslim. I was not raised as such, etc. A good Sri Lankan Muslim brother that gave me a Quran when I was young, younger and it sat on my shelf for 10 years because I thought I was going to find wife beating and child marriages inside it and all kind of crazy stuff. After finding out about some familial ties to Islamic societies, I decided to read the Quran and was amazed by what I read. I was quite surprised to find that the extreme concepts I had thought were in the Quran were actually in the Hadith, secondary books of sayings that are not considered equal to, to the scripture of the Quran by Muslims. I can completely understand why someone would think that Islamic culture has no place in Western society, given uh, the images painted in our media. I used to think the same thing myself with all the stories of terrorist organizations, honor killings, grooming gangs and the like. Then I came to understand that I was being exposed to radical Islamic extremism, 
and by definition was extreme and not representative of what the vast majority of Muslims believe now or have believed historically. Please understand, I'm not saying this is some media conspiracy in any way, shape or form. In fact, I'm saying quite the opposite. What I noticed after delving into the world of Islamic debate and dialogue was that the extremists, although the smallest segment of Muslims were making the most noise, while the no normal slash moderate Muslims were too busy arguing amongst themselves between the different sects on meaningless, meaningless matters of dogma to notice the extremists moving in the shadows or to call them out publicly. To that end, I have had two YouTube channels taken down by so-called Muslims for defending the free speech and criticisms of people like Tommy Robinson and Sarah Garvey and using the Quran to do so, or it's the stipulates they stand for justice even against yourselves. Uh, Tommy Robinson and Sarah Garvey are, 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 are uh, white and black nationalists. I don't agree with their ideology, but I agree with their ability to be able to voice their opinion and to voice critiques against Islam as long as they do not call for harm against people. Um, as a matter of fact, the video I made about the concept is one of Tommy Robinson's last few tweets on his, on his Twitter uh, page before it was taken down. It is my position that radical Islamic extremism is real and that the Quran obligates all Muslims to stand for justice against uh, stand for justice against such, even if we must stand against ourselves or our families. It is also my position that the religion of Islam is not against Western values, ethics, or society in general. The religion of Islam teaches principles consistent with the Western way of life, the non-aggression non -aggression principle, religious tolerance, women's rights, being a good citizen, disdain for oppression, academic study, and rational thought. It is my position that any disdain for the West is a cultural phenomenon and has nothing to do with the religion of Islam in and of itself. My position is that extremism does not belong in any society, Western or otherwise. I don't judge Islam by the extremists that violate the faith like ISIS or Boko Haram, just as I don't judge Western society and culture by Nazi Germany or the papal bulls that initiated the transatlantic slave trade. Most people that take issue with Islam either do so for religious or cultural reasons. However, there is nothing about the religion or culture of Islam that stopped Western Islamic cultures from sharing with and also enriching Western society. My father descends from West Africans who were historically Muslim that went through the slave trade. My mother descends from North African Jews that came to America via Spain and Mexico. Both lineages have historical ties to Islamic societies in North and West Africa. These are Western Islamic societies. They are interwoven into the fabric of the his, uh, and the history of, of and culture of Western society. Most are not aware of Islamic influences on Western society through no fault of their own. We are simply not taught about it in Western schools. Hopefully some light can be shed on, on that history here today. Disclaimer, we will most likely, me and my opponent will most likely disagree or most likely agree on the cultural expressions of Islam that we don't like. I'm willing to stand with anyone against child marriages battered women, grooming gangs, acts of terrorism, and the limiting of speech, etc. Muslims don't agree on hadith, scholars, or sex. Uh, the only thing that is agreed upon is the Quran as the source text. I will defend the Quran as the universal standard for Islam only. Uh, second disclaimer, the scholars and schools of jurisprudence that are linked to radical Islamic extremism are typically of a fundamentalist Salafism or Wahhabism from an 18th and 19th century uh, a school of thought that are that is in no way emblematic of Islam as a whole or the Western Islamic societies I will be mentioning here. These societies that I will be talking about historically were either Maliki, Zahri, Sufi, some were Shia. Uh, and these schools of thought were coming through in the, in the 8th and 10th centuries. And even before that, they were they, some school, uh, some uh, cultures predated schools of jurisprudence altogether, like when the Moors went into Spain in 711 AD. My premise is this. Yes, Western Islam, uh, Western Islam fits in Western society. Interactions and influences from Western Islamic cultures are interwoven into the fabric of Western society. Con uh, contributions from Western Islamic cultures on Western society are just as foundational to the construct of Western society as those from Greco-Roman culture, Judeo-Christian culture, the Renaissance, or the Enlightenment. Islamic, Islamic cultures translated Greek classics, expanded math, science, philosophy, and medicine, etc., and were involved in developing the West through alliance, trade, and exploration. Also with my premise, Muslim slaves and their modern descendants. Almost one-third of slaves taken in the transatlantic slave trade were from African Islamic societies. Around 25% of, of just American Muslims alone are descendants from slaves. Mm. 
American Muslim descendants of slaves do not have a his history of, of involvement with the terrorist acts of radical Islamic extremism. Uh, the Islamic societies they descend from were not historically Salafi or Wahhabi. American Muslim descendants of slaves not only helped build America through slave labor, but have integrated themselves into the pop culture and politics of America. Conclusion, if this discussion is in good faith, then we should be able to agree on solutions for fighting radical Islamic extremism in Western society. We should also be able to agree on the historical contributions made to Western society by Western Islamic cultures. Not to mention there should be no argument about American Muslim descendants of slaves fitting into Western society. Also, if this discussion is not in good faith, then I will expect the straw man of Salafism and Wahhabism and radical Islamic extremism being made to represent the whole of Islam. I would also expect the dismissive rhetoric about the existence of Western Islamic culture and hand waving of any demonstrable contributions to Western society. Not to mention a flat out denial of the American Muslim descendants of slaves fitting into Western society. Western Islamic societies and their influence. Greco-Arabic translate the, the Greco-Arabic translation movement of the 8th and 10th century in Baghdad at the House of Wisdom translated Gr uh, Greek text into Arabic such as uh, Aristotle, Homer, Plato, Hippocrates, Ptolemy, Yaren, and many, 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 many others. After such, uh, the Islamic world developed said, said information and retranslated the Greek and their own Arabic text on the information into Latin in the 10th and 13th centuries. You can see here uh, al Khorizmi. Ibn Sina, Al-Urdi, Al-Ghazali, Al-Farabi. These are all different uh, thinkers of medicine, science, astronomy, etc., that were translated into Latin text for, for, for the Western world. For instance, Al-Khorizmi, his name, we get, we get the name, the word algorithm from his name. We get algebra in our society from this man. Can you, can you, can you con conceive a Western society not using algorithms right now? Influences on Fibonacci and Copernicus, Newton and Descartes. These all came from Islamic cultures. We get Arabic numerals, the heliocentric view, laws of motion and epistemology being affected by, by these cultures. Aspects of Western daily culture via Islamic Iberia and Moors. We get toothpaste, deodorant, shaving, hair conditioner, three course meals. Mm -hmm. We also get coffee, distilled alcohol, daily bathing in seasonal fashion. Not to mention in these cultures, they had public bathhouses and public education and public ovens, et cetera. The, the, the foundation of, of, a, of, of, a, of a safety net in society as we, as we enjoy in the West, et cetera. Also aspects of the Western culture and via, via Islamic influence were the fact that you had Muslim, Jewish, Christians and female scholars and academics. You can look at Lubna of Cordoba, Maimonides and Hunayn ibn Ishaq and also al Saidi. These are female, Jewish, Christian, and even Sabian scholars, all flourishing within Islamic societies. We have Ibn Aswad, a Moorish Iberian navigator, said to have sailed over the Atlantic and found new land in eight, uh, 889 AD. We have Mustafa Asmuri, also known as Esteban the Moor. He was an explorer and servant. He explored North America from Florida to Arizona in, uh, from 1528 to 1539. We also have 800 years of Anglo-Moroccan alliance to trade and culture. Uh, going back from uh, to 1213 to, to modern times and whatnot. We also, we also see that through, through said alliance, trade and culture, that, that Islamic presences and figures show up in, in, uh, in Anglo pop culture. For instance, you have Shakespeare writing, writing about five Moorish characters in, in five and four plays of his, most notably Othello the Moor. At Setri and Arthurian legends, there are four Saracen knights that participate in, 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 a, in his round table, etc. 400 years of Dutch and Moroccan alliance uh, with, with uh, 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 trade and culture, etc. Right? We have the Treaty of Friendship and Free Commerce in 1608 and 1610. And in, in such trade and commerce, etc., we, we see that Islamic cultures show up in their culture, in their pop culture as well. You can see the story of Morgan, an Arthurian romance about the Moorish knight, about a Moorish knight. There was 250 years of U.S., Moroccan, and Barbary alliance, almost 250 years, in America, trade, etc. Morocco recognized, was the first country to recognize the U.S. in 1777 and was the first to strike a treaty with them in 1786-1787. The Treaty of Tripoli in 1796, listen to this, stipulates this in Article 11. There is no enmity with the Muslim religion. America has no enmity with the Muslim religion. 
And in our pop, our pop culture in America, we see this, we watch this every year in this country. The, 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 the movie Roots. It's a story about a Muslim slave struggle to retain his culture. One of the famous lines from that from that from that uh, from that from that uh, story is in movie is when Kunta Kinte is proposing to his wife and says, "I'm not going to be no Christian man. I'm not going to eat no pork. I expect I'm going to be hard to live with sometimes." Meaning him praying multiple times a day. This is in our modern American culture. Again, American Muslims who were enslaved or Muslims who were enslaved who were enslaved, and again we have American Muslim descendants thereof. Ayyub uh, Suleiman uh, Diallo. We have Omar ibn Said, Yara Mahmud, Abdul Rahman Ibrahim ibn Sari. All of these men were Fulani men from Senegal and Guinea. And all of them were extremely, extremely educated and can write in Arabic, etc. whatnot. We have memoirs from them. We have histories from them written down. We have theology and the auto, and autobiographies you can, you can watch or you can go read and go check out. And we can see how, how, how some became entrenched into our society after being freed, becoming merchant financiers, et cetera, whatnot. Also, just, just, just to note, one was actually freed and sent back to Africa via one of the Moroccan uh, treaties that was signed. Got about 30 seconds. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, real quick, I want to talk about a few um, Muslims who are, who are descendants of slaves who are no, well known in American pop culture. You have Malcolm X. He's the major cause behind modern uh, conversion to Islam. We have Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest boxers of all time. We have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the leading scorer in the NBA. We have Ahmad Rashad. He was a sportscaster and in, in the, in the husband of Felicia, Felicia Rashad, the, the, the TV wife of, of, of Bill Cosby. And on top of that, we have the first two Muslim uh, Muslims who were a part of American Congress they are African Americans who converted to Islam. Do they not fit in the West? Do 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 all the different contributions of Islam not fit in the West? Mm. If they don't, then you need to go back to a to a to a, a a view to where you look at the Earth as the center of the world and it's flat. You got to give up your coffee. You got to give up your 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 bathing. You got to give up your your distilled alcohol, etc., 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 etc. But with that, I yield the balance of my time. Thanks so much. We will kick it back into the dialogue boxes. And so thanks for your opening from Orthodox Moore. We are going to kick it over to Dean for his opening as well. Thanks for being here, Dean. All right. Um, Mr. James, thank you for having me on your show. Um, the Orthodox Moore, I'm happy to, to debate with you today. I would like to talk on the motion that um, Islam is not... Um, Feed for the Western society. So first of all, what is Islam? Islam means um, submission to Allah. Hold on one sec. And Allah is an Arabic second. term mean, meaning God. Dean, so but if, if we we'll look at it on... Dean, if, one sec. I think that there hmm? might be a little bit of an internet connection issue. Just one sec. Um, sorry to interrupt. I'll restart your time so that you have the full 12 minutes. But it was just that we were already starting to lose you there. So uh, we'll give you a restart right now. And thanks for your patience. The floor is all yours. Okay, thank you for having me on your show. And James, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming to talk with me. First of all, I'd like to start. What does Islam mean? Islam simply means submission to Allah. Allah is an, is an Arabic word meaning God. So in Islam, it it, it simply means that you, you you don't make any choice of your own, make no decision of your own. You just, you just choose to follow God, and that's just it. But according to the to, to the to Islamic uh, Jewish students, Islam has has, has been meant to 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 worship Allah alone and none else, to offer prayers perfectly, pay the compulsory charity, and to observe fast during the month of Ramadan. In, in the seventh century, a guy named, named Muhammad claimed to hear from an angel called Angel Gabriel, even if we don't know whatever that that means, then he, he claimed that there's only one, one God and, and decides to follow the God of the um, Jews and the Christians. All right, and, and since then, um, Islamic empires have, 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 have spread through violence, wars, slavery, and everything that, that, that will get that will get get out uh, through the rate of this debate. All right, okay. Sahih Buhari, 
one of the most respected hadiths in Islam, even though my brother said we shouldn't go into the hadiths, but please permit me to um, quote, quote what Sahib Wari says on, on, on the topic of Islam. He said that Islam means to, to surrender is to testify that there is no God but God, and that Muhammad is God's messenger to perform the prayer, bestow arms, um, fast in Ramadan, and, and, and make earth cans. The, the pilgrimage to the holy house. Now, what is this? This is the the um, the five pillars of of Islam, which is um, compulsory um, giving, which is called the zakat. Um, you, you you must go to um to pilgrimage in um, Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and to, to for you to prove that there is only one God. The definition of Islam alone. Proves that um, the, the um, belief can be compatible with the West. Why, why do I say so? The the, the West is um, built on um, different opinion. It, it, it's a multiversal place. It's not a place whereby you follow one um, idea and you, and you stick to that idea. Any any idea that feels superior to another that that, that, that and only him should should be heard is a problem in the West. The the West is the headquarters of democracy. They are they are over. Um, 20, if not if not more countries in the Middle East, countries in Africa that follow Islamic law, they don't give us this um, this 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 platform for debate. We can't do this in Saudi Arabia or Iran. Okay, yes, I, I intentionally mentioned Saudi Arabia or Iran. Now, Islam has two denominations, the Sunni or uh, and the Shia. Now, which 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 do we follow? Which is the word of God? Do we follow Abu Bakr or Imam Ali? That one is still a question that we are here to answer today. I think there's maybe, uh, forgive me, I'll, um, I promise I'll give you the time back. It's, uh, and as, forgive and me, I, Dean, I hate to interrupt. Proceed, I talked Dean, about it. Dean, I promise I'll give you the time back. It sounds like there's kind of like a rustling in the background. I hate to be so picky. It's just it's like maybe papers or something. It's a little bit, sometimes it kind of spikes the audio on me into the red. But you can keep going, but just wanted to let you know that. Oh. Um, Okay, okay, sorry, let me get the papers off the microphone then. Okay, thank you. Then I won't play with, play with the, the mic. As I'm saying, I'm talking about the, the Sunni and the, and the Shia Islam now. Which do we follow? I talked about the five pillars of Islam earlier, and everybody knows that that goes with the Sunni. Maybe why the, the Shia has a, a, a seven pillars of, of Islam. So, which is the way, man? How, how can this um, um, idea that is in conflict with, with, it, with its own self, they are applicable in the West. The, the, the West, if, if we look at America, for example, the question of, indep of independence, and it says that all men are created equal, and, and all men should should do something that that, 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 that will create their pursuit of, ha of happiness. Then, but if we go back to the 7th century and, and how um, Mo Mo Mohammed spread Islam, I don't think that brought happiness to people. I, I don't think that that was someone in the West who would be happy to... Uh, we're, Dean, I'm sorry, we're, we're still not, we're not quite hearing you, Dean. Dean, we're, we're not... Uh, Dean, I'd say I couldn't hear... Dean, one second. Dean, okay, Dean, one second. I, I'm sorry, like the last 10 seconds I or so, I just couldn't hear. Are you um, are you able to get to a spot that might have a stronger connection? It's it's just kind of, okay. it seems like it was cutting out that time. It wasn't the sound interference. It was more that the connection might not have done it, like uh, might not have been that strong. Yeah, we, we cannot okay. hear you. Uh, I can't hear you. Yeah, so I don't. I mean, I. It's definitely your internet connection. I mean, your it's your maybe part mic, but part internet connection. The, Are you hearing me now? Yes. This. Uh, We'll try to go again. All right. Um, it's all good. Let, okay. Let me bring. Are you ready me now? Think, Let me bring the Wi-Fi closer to. I can yeah, hear yeah. it still though that your Fresh. internet connection is kind of ebbing and flowing. I don't know if it can handle the Zoom audio. Um, I don't know if if it's uh we're just not quite getting your audio in that smoothly, but we'll give it a shot. We'll kind of keep trying. And then, uh, if you're able to, I hate to be so. 
hard on you, but uh, just if you're able to slow down just a bit, just because I think it's hard for people to hear just because it's, it's also going fast and then the internet connection and then the sound feedback is hard, but uh, we'll kick it back over to you. Are you there? Um, I'm, I don't know for sure if we're going to be able to finish this debate. Uh, Dean, I don't know if you're there or if you can hear me, but we just can't quite hear you. Um, we might not be able to continue because I, people, it's just really hard to hear you. I don't know if you can hear me right now. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Are you hearing me? Uh, no. Like once in a while, I can hear you, but I, I just don't know if this is going to work today. Okay. Um, I think that, you know, I'm really sorry we give it our best shot. Um, I mean, if you can hear me now, in the pre show, I felt like it was more consistent, but it's just, but maybe that's just because we were, you know, setting up. Yes. We weren't talking and we couldn't notice it. Um, are you, can you hear me? I'm hearing you clearly, but I don't get why you're not hearing me clearly. Yeah. Wherever you're at, Dean, just stay right there. Just stay right there. Don't move around. We'll try again. Yeah, I think, like, let's just go from right where you are. We can keep trying, and we'll see. Hopefully, it'll keep going. Okay. Do I start afresh, or I should continue from where I stopped? Uh, let's see. I would say maybe, like, two minutes into it would be fine. Uh... So like only last minute or so, cause the last minute has been me asking if you can hear me. So maybe just the last minute, if you want to repeat that and we'll keep going. Okay. I was, I was, I was talking about um, the, the um, two major, major uh, the, the denominations of um, Islam, which is the Sunni and the Shia. And now if, if we look at this um, two major, major denominations, they're already causing so many conflicts in the Middle East between um, Saudi Arabia and Iran. In, in Iran, especially, three three dudes were sentenced to death last last week. What the, what was their crime? Simply um, protesting against the um, Ayatollah, and who is the Ayatollah? The spiritual leader of Iran. Also, if we, if we look at uh, men like Osama bin Laden, which they uh, have nothing to do with Islam, in the creation of Saudi Arabia as a state, it was simply an agreement between them, um, Mohammed ibn Ad al Wahhab and um, Mohammed bin Saud, in order to form a a, a cohesive state for the Arab run under Islamic um, ideology. And, and now, if, if we look at what happened in Afghanistan, how, how, how do we have these two people to go confront the, the Soviet Union, which led to um, uh, Osama bin Laden go, going there to um, chase out the Soviet Union and the rest of Osama bin Laden is history. And now, if we say that that has nothing, nothing to do with um, Islam, then I ask, what else? Islam that spread spread to um, violence. Wherever Islam went, violence followed. The only place that um, we can say that Islam didn't go with violence is South Asia, in places like Indonesia, Malaysia. Yes, Islam didn't it, it didn't spread with violence. But if we look at the Middle East, Muhammad it, himself start, started the whole process with with violence. And it, it, is 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 that what is applicable in the West? Obviously, not so. In the West, is is run by a liberal democracy, whereby yeah, everyone is free to to say what they like and dislike. Like for example, this is our part, our, our discussion today, is is taking place in, in the West. We can't do this in, in, in the streets of Iran or Saudi Arabia or any Muslim majority country. There there are laws against converting out of Islam. If someone converts from Islam to to, to, to Christianity, yeah, it's it's, it's gonna be. Be killed, and I, I can I can use verse, verse, verse of, of the Quran to to prove that point. Uh, in Surah nine, in Surah nine eleven to twelve, Surah sixteen uh, hundred and six, and and Surah four eighty nine, it, it states clearly, kill the kufri, and with and, and, and with with the kufri, anyone who disbelieves Islam should be. As the, Executed and in various um, parts of the hadith, the, the Sahih Buhari and this and the um, Sahih Muslim, it has been stated clearly that um, that, that someone should be heard. Anybody who, who, who lives the faith, I, I don't think that's 
that's what people in the West should um, so, subscribe to. In in the West, everybody lives there freely. The Muslim, the the Christian, the Jew, the atheist. For example, look at the Oxford Union. Maybe so many debates have taken place. I don't I don't see such such debate in Iran. No, nobody knows the atheist of um, Saudi Arabia. And one one more point. Throughout the last century, there were over a million Jews in the Middle East. They are they, they, they are Jews in Iran, Iraq. Lebanon and every other Muslim majority area in the Jews. But today, where are the Jews? I ask that question, where are the Jews? Outside from Israel, is there any part of, place, part of, the, of the Middle East that, that you can find the Jews? Nowhere. Also, in Pakistan, as of the last century, there are, there are 7 million Muslims and over 200 monks in um, Pakistan. But today, there are only two Hindu temples in um, Pakistan and over 200 Jews, sorry, 200 Hindus. Where are the Hindus? Like I've always said before, and I'll say it on this platform also. Christianity is politics, but Islam is, uh, sorry, Christianity is business, Islam is, is politics. Yes. Islam is a political movement. It's, 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 not, it's no longer a religion, it's now a, a political movement. Whereby it, 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 it tends to anywhere you go, change the um, order and the um, government overthrow the government as in let me use the word a coup take, take over the system and 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 immediately installs its own version of whatever it it, it thinks is the best form of um, sharia law in that place for example 1979 islamic Re revolution whereby the shah which was supported by the west was removed and um everybody know what iran is today we all we all know how the middle east has 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 been passed and died with, with with various wars here and there. I I, I conclude with, with this statement: If Islam was so great, why do Muslims run from the predominant Muslim areas and go to the West? If Islam was was, was not nice, why don't the Muslims in the West pack up their bag and head to Saudi Arabia? If Islam was so nice, why can't Shia Muslims worship peacefully in their own mosques in Saudi Arabia? And why can't Muslims in Saudi Arabia do the same in Iran? If Islam was so good, why did the destruction of, of Yemen? Thank you. Uh, gotcha. Thank you very much. And then, Dean, we do have to fix a couple of things before we go forward. I don't know what it is, but in I'm looking at the OBS sound meter, and your the speech that's coming through is in the green, and it's bumping into the yellow, which is pretty much where we want it. But there's like something, I don't know if it's a crumpling paper or like a clicking noise that flies into the red. It's And so it's kind of like... It's a little bit jarring. I'm not sure if you're able to figure out what it is that might be all of a sudden just kind of really quick little blips that are super loud um, and distracting. But we will go into the open discussion. And then I think Orthodox More, if you're able to help me out, I'm my attention kind of being both on the chat for questions as well as listening to the debate. If there's anything that you're able to hear uh, and able to explain like what was said, uh, because it's hard for me. No worries. That would be super helpful. Thanks so much. I'll do my best. And the floor is all yours, guys. Thanks so much. So who gets the first question? Uh, just open conversation so you guys can feel free to just kind of dialogue. Mm -hmm. Okay, so real quick is, is uh, I want to clear this up with, with Dean. So is, are, are you against like all religions in the West? Like are you against Christianity and Judaism, etc.? Or are you just against Islam? Yeah, sure. I'm agnostic. I don't believe in God for any reason. I'm against every religion, not just Islam. But I talk more on Islam because I'm understand it's a political movement. If you can go back to, hey, Dean, if you, you're cutting in and out real quick. If you can go back to, I don't know if you move around, but if you can go back to wherever you were. Once politics come in, that, that's where I Call me in that critical lay Islam because I understand it is a political movement. The the shark is 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 set to overthrow law. Dean, we can't hear you. Dean, now. Dean, we can't hear you. You're cutting you're I cutting just, out, brother. We need to Dean, we've got to do something here, otherwise we gotta I, I am afraid we'll have to stop this debate. Uh, hold on a second. Not is what, hold on, I'm still talking. Is that we've got to do something so here. You do so get my hold on a second, Dean. Is that we have to fix this? 
otherwise it just doesn't make sense for people to listen right so i mean if they can't hear you there's no point to continue so i need you to work with me mm-hmm. is there is there a spot you can go to where the the connection is better mm-hmm. or did you move from the spot that you were at during your opening mm-hmm. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfect. Dean, can you hear me? Yeah, I just yeah, we don't might think have to scratch this, this one. going to work. I give it now. I I think that we're we're getting kind of the robot voice though. It's just it's really hard to make. I am clearly now. Uh, like fifty percent maybe. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, you're sounding you're sounding like the Matrix for me. This is just I just don't think it's gonna work, Dean. From what uh like what we've had so far, so I think we're gonna we're gonna have to try to scrap it. I really wish that we could continue, but I just don't think we can. There is just no way we can. I can't hear what you're saying. Um, but we do want to say thanks everybody for coming out and hanging out with us. Uh, maybe Dean is trying to reconnect. If he's able to reconnect, we can give it one last try. But otherwise, do want to mention we appreciate your support, folks. We are very excited for a lot of debates coming up. We are in talks with a lot of new people that we are bringing on the channel and a lot of new topics as well. So I know that this one was a challenging one. And so thanks for your patience, folks. We just have to kind of go with the best we can in terms of like the connection. We, we kind of go with it and hope it'll, it'll hold in the pre-show. It seemed like it was okay. Like we could all understand each other. But like I said, maybe we just didn't notice that the connection was ebbing and flowing because... We just weren't carrying a conversation. It was more just me trying to set up an OBS and, and asking a couple of questions like who's going to go first and all that. So we do want to say Orthodox and War will probably be back as depending on whether or not we hear back from Mike Enoch, they may debate, uh, which should be an interesting one. So want to say thanks so much, folks. There will be a debate tonight, and that is two atheists versus two Christians. So that should be a really fun one. want to say thanks so much, everybody, for being here. I think we probably lost Dean completely. And so I think that that's maybe why we he hasn't logged back in. So we do hope you're well, Dean. Uh, maybe if we find another connection spot where we have it, uh, you know, have a smooth connection, we can give it another shot someday. But want to say thanks so much, everybody, for hanging out with us today. Sorry, I know that you expected a debate and... We will actually, we are open. Orthodox Moore has a, a smooth connection. If someone else in the next week would like to step up and do this debate with Orthodox Moore, arguing that Islam does not fit in Western society, let us know and we will work to make that debate happen. So let's see. We gave it the whole college try. That's right. Let's sure see. did. So want to say thanks so much, folks, and we will maybe this is uh, something we can do next week where maybe maybe in the next two weeks we'll find someone who will give them a, a decent amount of time to prepare for the debate. And my guess is Orthodox more. You'd still be up for it no matter who it was with. And yes, we can sir. try that. So want to say thanks, everybody, for being with us. We hope you guys come back tonight for that debate. Two atheists versus two Christians in a tag team debate on whether or not Christianity is true. So that should be a fun one. And I want to say thanks again for coming by, everybody. Keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable. And thanks both Dean, who is no longer with us. We hope you're well, Dean. And thanks Orthodox Moore as well. Yeah, thank you one more time for being one of the host of the debate. Absolutely. Take care, folks, and we will hopefully see you tonight. <laughs>